Salatun, welcome back to the final segment of BFA's On The Ball Show. We've got Enam with us now to all talk all things CFL and other things with BFA activities. There's loads going on as well. So let's get straight to the point. Enam, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, please. Good yeah. stuff, good stuff. Right, we've looked, at the, we've looked at the results. Now, you're the main man at CFL. Big, big, uh, big day. It had to happen yeah, yeah. because they were walking away, right? Yeah, so what does that mean for the league? It's opened up... Uh, for I think a few teams now, um, like Otatunas, Newark, and East One, um, you know, it's surprisingly, I mean, Bernardo beating them. Yeah, today. what happened? Was, what happened there? Were they? Is it a case <coughs> of Aberfeldy not having players, or were I they? I think they've just had an off day, really, to tell you the truth. You know, okay. all the players were there. I saw Khaled earlier on, you know, before kickoff, and mm. he was fairly confident. But um, it's one of them days. Um, all the best teams can lose on the day. You know, if you're not having a good day, you That's never know true. what can happen. But what about Bernardo? How did they look? Bernardo had a good, strong team. They had a very good, strong team out there. Um, they've been missing out on, you know, results lately. Mm. E even in the cup against uh, Newark, it was 2-2. Two -two. They lost um, on penalty shootouts. So, I mean, um, it's been one of them seasons, I think. Um, uh, it's, it's been a strange one, even from my team, East One. So we've improved, you know, in patches, in games. But then we lost on Friday. Mm. Uh, it's it's it's, a, it's a funny season for us. Okay. So, but you still out of tune us and yourselves. You yeah. can, you can take something from this season. We there can. There is an opportunity. <clears throat> but you have, I guess, you know, the, you have the yeah. biggest task of mm. all. You play Aberfeldy in the semi-final. Yeah, it's going to be uh, the semi-finals at Stepney Green. Um, so are both semi-finals at, at Stepney Green? Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, that's the so plan. So just tell I people mean, what, what's yeah. happening. So semi-finals yeah, when are they on one day or? What's no, no, no. The Auto Tunis uh, Newark game is going to be on the twenty-first of February. That's a Tuesday. And that's a Tuesday night. And your um, one. Our one's on the 28th of Feb. That's the following Tuesday. The following Tuesday. Okay. So, you know, hopefully there should be a big crowd coming up, you know. Um, we've had decent crowds, even in your game, even our game at um, Newark. It's a great atmosphere. You know, Newark had the usual support. So I think there's a different feeling playing the evening games at Stepney Green. Okay. You know, so it should be interesting. Um, and it's like, um, I think uh, um, I could say... I think they've run away with the league already. I think they've won it. I think we're playing for second places. Um, you know, three, four teams. Um, you know, um, I think that's 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 what it's going to be. You still got to play Aberfeldy, and that's, that's yeah. going to be a double header. So it's going to be league and and cup. and cup and cup. Right. So winner takes all. Winner, winner takes so all. Yeah. He's he's got them beforehand. Yeah. So he plays them the week before you play mm. them. Yeah. And he's adamant they're going to that is win. So that's three points gone there. You play them in the semi-final yeah. and the league, so it's winner-takes-all in terms of yeah. that. So that's potentially, you know, like I say, a semi-final. And so you, you, the, if you win that one, that's another three points drop for Aberfeld. Yeah. So that's six points. It's doable. Yeah. It's doable. It depends what kind of team I get out on that day. Um, we're, playing, um, we're playing the Sunday before that as well. So, we, we, you know, we're, gonna, we're playing on the 26th and on the 28th. Okay. So it's like, um, it's a different feeling this year at CFO. I think most of the teams are experiencing it, you know. It's turned out good. I, I mean, we, we've had a few cancel, cancellations on the fixture, but this Tuesday, um, Friday games has uh, spiced it up a bit, as okay. you can say, you know, on the league. It's been very interesting. R uh, Reggie, in terms of your, we've touched on it <coughs> earlier, I asked Indra, do you, do you think it's an advantage to certain teams to play on the 3G? Because I think playing at yes, Onestead uh, with we'll the pitch the way it is, yeah. I'm guessing teams like... Teams like Aberfeldy, teams like Newark, teams like you know, a footballing team will would prefer to play. Of uh, of course, because the thing is, uh, in a 3G pitch, everybody performing better than in a mock, like mm. in the field. Because now it's a weather. It's like uh, if you can see the weather. It's uh, it's not that uh, right there, uh, raining and slice and stuff. But the thing is, um, 3G, I prefer more. It's going to be forward. a good game. Yeah, yeah. way okay. forward. It's, All right. it's going to be good game there. Good, correct passes and control the balls. And we've, stuff. Sorry, Reggie. I mean, we've given the options to all the teams. I mean, we've sent out all the dates available. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've asked teams like first come, first serve, basically. Um, you know, so I think they've put their hands up first. Uh, we've done it a couple of times. Aberfeldy now. So it's anyone's opportunity to, you know, if the dates are there, you know, just come up and play your game. If you can get another team to play you there on mm -hmm. the same night. I know some teams have players, you know, finishing work late. 
I think if you can try, I mean, it's a good opportunity for them. Eight o'clock kickoff, right? Yeah, eight o'clock. Yep. That's yeah, reasonable. That's a reasonable time. I think that you can play the football you want, and it's like you said, it's great facilities. Right. The pitches are perfect. Mm. You know, you can't go wrong. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, other things going on at, uh, at BFA. There's yeah. loads of. Uh, you've, let's talk about the Sporting Bengal Academy. You had a brilliant. Yeah, I had a today. brilliant result. Local derby big, beating. Big game. Yeah, London Apsa. 9-1 today yeah. at Once of Flats in the morning. It was a great performance from the lads. Goal scorers? Um, we had Adil scored two. Um, Zaydan scored four. Wow. Uh, you know, um, Zubair scoring one. It was a great performance from all the lads. We conceded first. Uh, yeah. You know, they were winning one nil first half. Yeah. And all nine goals from our second side half. killed the second half. Blimey. You know, <laughs> okay. I, I had to put a proper drill it into them, you know. We've been working really hard in at training sessions yeah. um, on Tuesdays. You know, it's paying off. You can, you you get a good buzz when you see the lads delivering uh, on on on, on the the Sunday on the pitch. You know what you're doing at training. Uh, I just want to ask uh, Nasir. I mean, a few questions on Go that as well. I mean, um, we have kids now like <clears throat> Emru's son and my son. I think they're one of the you know few boys that are growing up. I yeah. think at their age, they're putting calf muscles and right. hamstrings and everything. Um, you know, my son again today, uh, Raul played five minutes and he he's pulled got, a muscle. He's got, not muscle, he's got ankle problem or something. Ankle problem. Right, so, right. at this age, I mean, what would you yeah. say? What's the best thing for these? Is it growing th problems? Growing spurts? Because he's um, been suffering for six months now. With his yeah, he is. Yeah, his, yeah. I mean, the calf one is resolved and all of a sudden it's his ankle now. But it's just, but they yeah. are growing. They are, they are growing. growing. I don't yeah. think yeah. I've having this problem yeah, for about yeah, two yeah. years now. Yeah. Um, one, one of the funny things that we do at uh, like the Premier League level is... Um, we call it biobanding, where we don't band age groups, but mm. we band them based on their their, their growth spurts. Okay. Uh, so we call it peak height velocity. It's when a kid naturally just has a spurt from a neuromuscular level. Like you don't need to do anything to him. You don't even need to touch him, but he'll wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden his voice is broken. <laughs> He's getting bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're thinking, what on earth happened to you? And it's crazy because, like, for example, you could look at your under 12s and you could look at your 13s and you're like, like, there's a massive difference mm. between them two and, like, what's happened. So um, there's that. And then there's the fact itself that the lifestyles of each one of these lot is different. One of them will go home and, like I said, they're having chicken and chips. The other one's going home. He's having his rice. He's having his curry. He's having his chicken. And he's growing according to everything that could be done right. And in the process of that, you might you might get the odd few who've now grown muscle at a faster rate than others, um, which means they're just more exposed to, for example, yeah. um, injury. But at the same time, if they're getting stronger, then it means they're at a lower risk of getting injured compared to the guys who are not. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what is that? Are you saying those that are getting, for example, yep. Adil and my son, yep. uh, they they have they've He's, he, my son all of a sudden just shot up. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's like five foot nine now. Yeah, yeah, and he's fifth, he's fourteen years old. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so in the last year, he's just grown. Just yeah, yeah. Just and flies that's down. when the pains have started. So he's having these yeah. cramps and this and that. So what do you do? do you, like, I've started sending him to the gym. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's he goes. He's at the yeah. gym now uh, uh, once a week. Yeah. He's on the treadmill twice a week. Okay. Trying to combat and looking and yes, yeah. we're, we're monitoring his food now as well. Okay. So Excellent. Yeah. What I've started to do in terms of his diet, so yeah. making sure he's leaving the house with porridge. Yeah. He's not eating. Nice. He stopped. All the junk. He oh, he's wow. not a big fan of fizzy anyway. Okay, uh, but we're helps. trying to yeah. look at him because yeah. that is a problem, and I'm, yeah. I'm trying to. Re but he's still having it. The cramps have stopped. Yeah. But now he's got this other problem with his ankle from somewhere. Yeah. But so how do you, do you, do we encourage them to go to the gym at yeah. this age? I don't know. Um, I'd say I'd encourage anyone, like for example, that's involved in a sport, to mm. also to always incorporate strength training somewhere because it's the basis of all fundamental movement. But at this stage, maybe it needs to be supervised. It maybe needs to be um, understood that it's not just the average bench press or the bicep curl that's going to get him faster on the pitch or that's going to save his ankle. But it's the it's the little simple things like you know can he can he move his you know can he can he bend forward using his hips as opposed to his lower back? Can he kick upwards as opposed to you know um, just just like pulling his hamstring every time he does so and and things like that. They're not. They're not technical, although it sounds it. It just it's just good maintenance skills. So you go into the gym, for example, and you know that he can he can move with the bar forward and back in a good deadlift position that maintains a nice neutral spine, keeps his core in check, and isn't using other muscles that don't need to be used. Same thing in the warm-ups. You know, are you just 
you know, stretching the hamstring. Mm -hmm. And w w basically what it is what recently that came up in, in, in the sports science world is like the, the whole sitting down and stretching one leg for like 20 seconds. The reason why that's not useful, for example, for, for a game is relaxing a muscle when you're about to stimulate for 90 minutes is not a great idea, but you want to activate the muscle. So we call it basically dynamic stretching as opposed to passive mm -hmm. stretching where you're just standing in one place holding the, the leg. That's not the same thing as moving the leg up and down or activating it in a way which it's about to, you know, which is about to get used in. And obviously, um, diet is very important at this age. Um, what they eat, I it mean, plays a role. Yeah, it plays a role. I mean, what, I mean, what about? I mean, on the, on a game like on a Sunday, they're play, playing at ten o'clock. Yeah, you can't literally wake up at nine o'clock and turn up on the pitch no. and start kicking a ball. It doesn't yeah. help, does it? No. It, it, now it, I'm telling my son something because yeah. he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, diet is is a big thing as well. I mean, it's part of my profession to obviously understand that. Yeah. I, I don't always understand the, f the full niggles behind it, but what I do know is that. For example, when we, from a scientific aspect, look at performance, match day food is even different to training day food. Do you, do you know what I'm mm, saying? Like mm. nutrition is very separate. You'll have a nutritionist, for example, that will prepare for athletes a certain amount of electrolytes and salts within their drinking water, as opposed to what, you know, what they do for them on a, a, a match day. So uh, w one of the things that I, I would say for any, any player out there right now uh, at any level, Match day preparation, you need to be a bit more prepared than rocking up one hour before the game. And if you think that's early, that's not because, <laughs> <laughs> because that would, that's, no. yeah, that's, yeah, that would be great to get you in one hour before. Yeah. But I'm talking about some teams are there the night beforehand. They've checked into their hotels. And I'm not saying yeah, that's, that's yeah. what you should be doing, but you need to start thinking about it. if you've got a game, let's just say, um, I don't know, 11 a.m. kickoff on a Sunday, you need to be up by nine, getting breakfast in, having a look at what, what is expected of you as, as a teammate and as an individual, then get there a bit early, start thinking about your tactics and your set pieces, and then an hour beforehand um, is maybe when you start getting changed. And then what we do sometimes, for example, as part of professional teams, we get there way before, like four hours beforehand, we have, a little, we have a little grub, we sit down, we sit in the locker rooms, we prepare the locker rooms with all the team kits, I'm sure everyone's like uh, aware of the, those practices. And then you sit there as a team, you discuss what's going on, and then they go out there, they get prepared. They, they get physically prepared, mentally prepared for the warm up, the activation and everything. A little huddle, then there's ball warm ups. You know, you actually practice with the ball because what we do is generally without mm. the ball. You want to activate the muscles and everything. You, we want that to be done separate from their mind on football. After it's, that. It's, it's, it's difficult sometimes as well because it's grassroots football. Yeah, of course, you know, of course. Yeah. We're not that kind of, yeah, sorry. Guys, I'm going to stop you. We've, yeah. uh, we've got a caller on the line. Yeah, sure. waiting for a while. Let's take this call. Uh, you have to get yeah, we, I'm my get... Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, we'll leave that goal. Let's just I think say... that was for Reggie. <laughs> because you have the penalty oh, boys. No. Right? <laughs> Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. And we'll go back to what we were talking yeah, about. No, it's, uh, yeah, no, like I was saying, grassroots, I mean, yeah. it's quite difficult. Um, no, of course. Because yeah, yeah. we know that kind of, you know, they got there in their heads. I mean, um, we're not professionals. And, yeah, yeah no, of But course, I do yeah. tell them, I mean, yeah. at the academy, Sporting yeah. Academy, Bengal Academy, yeah. uh, we're trying to implement all the... Um, you know, right way of eating, and yep. we advise them not no chicken and chips, no yeah, yeah. PFCs. Yeah, I mean, I've stopped it totally in my right. house. I said, no okay. way, you're not touching that anymore. Yeah. You know, um, so I think it come down comes down to parenting. Yeah, um, what we you know diet is very important. Yep. Yeah. and. Every other shop is a PFC now. It yeah, yeah no, of course, yeah, especially uh, in East London. <laughs> like the brother yeah. called from, um, I think, from uh, South East, uh, West London. It's very important that we get it right at home first mm. yeah. before they go out to football For sure. or training yeah. or school or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's very important that yeah. we understand as parents. Yeah. And obviously, when, when they go out there, the coaches obviously, yeah. you know, putting it into the kids. Um, Reggie, I mean, uh, this guy's what well, he's had today. I, I need some of that. Because where did he get all that energy from? What's uh, happening? Yeah, yeah. That might be more, a bit more than PFC, uh, right, Reggie? I mean, you look like you're 25, <laughs> only, only 25. <laughs> that's why I feel when I play with young lads always, all my life. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest with you, in Saturday uh, um, games in, 
in uh, Essex Olympia, I told already that my manager, I say, listen to me. Don't they don't know how old you don't are. Rely, no, they do. Uh, <laughs> I've been 17 years there. I say, don't rely on me. Yeah. But it kid called me, he said, Reg, I really need you. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't release you just yet. You got a leg of 24 years old. <laughs> uh, Reggie, 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 uh, you're a legend, mate, already. So. You're a legend already. All right, listen, Nasser, in terms of your own future plans, okay, we, we yeah. know where you're at at the moment, but yeah. in terms of what your plans are moving forward, forward is football the industry that you want to be involved in or, or do you would you prefer to be because your, your background is MMA and uh, mixed yeah, martial combat arts sports, combat yeah, sports and, and so what's the future for you are you going to stay in football or yeah. rugby or do you intend to do something around the, the lungs of martial arts um it, it's like I was saying like the 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 outcome the outcome of my degree was to 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 mix the the elite performance world with science and I, I think um you know, we live, in a, we live in a time nowadays where, you know, we've got Dr. Khans and Dr. Patels and everyone excelling in different fields mm. um, where, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that might have not been the case. They could have felt uncomfortable about getting into those kind of professions. And I think I, I want it to be that um, I don't want to look at it from a particular sport or an individual sport, although I found a, a, a very newfound respect in football since being at uh, Crystal Palace this year. But I want it to be that... I want to excel in the, the, the scientific research that is related to elite performance and hopefully feed it, drip feed it back into the performance in sport. So it's almost like part time being in a lab and then coming out onto the field and saying, you know what, this has been proven. Let's try it out. And then it doesn't work on the field. So we go back into the lab and we say, you know what, it didn't work on the field. Let's try it back here. And so just share with people what, what your dissertation is on and what you're, you're planning to do. Because it kind of yeah. relates to what yeah. Enam was asking about. I guess yeah. not so much kids, but adults in terms of, but it does yeah. relate in, yeah. in, in the work rate and the damage that oh, we're yeah, creating sure. to our bodies and our muscles, yeah. right? So that's, yeah. your, that's your dissertation for, the, for your final year project. Yeah. Just give people a bit of an insight into what, what that's about. So, what um, so my research project is based on um, acute or basically, so there's acute and chronic, chronic being like way after four days, three, four days. Acute fatigue is straight after 90 minutes. We know players experience that because they start decreasing performance over time in the game, right? Um, but we're not sure as to all the causes. So we could say it's, for example, all the running. Um, but the running forward isn't as bad as, for example, stopping really rapidly and changing direction. Mm. So on, on a cellular level, when we look at the muscles, there's, you know, there's damage that's happening to them way more from stopping, cutting, changing direction, moving that way, moving this way, as opposed to just running in a straight line. So what, we, what, we're, what we're trying to see is through blood samples and uh, through you know, markers of fatigue that we use at, um, at Premier League level, so using GPS units, we want to see does changing direction, particularly decelerating every time you run and accelerate, then decelerate, then accelerate, then decelerate, is that one of the biggest causes or can that see to be correlated? with why there's always a drop off in performance, why guys are getting more and more tired, why there's a build up of lactate in their legs. You know, why, why is this drop off happening? And um, yeah, it's, it's not just, I, I could say it's Premier League football, but then even the guys at grassroots, they need to understand they are still athletes in their own respect, even if they're not at elite football. And they are still machines that work in a way that they're trying to, to, to stay fit. And if they don't use the methods that are used at, for example, let's just say, with, without the technology, if they don't use warm-up strategies, dieting strategies, they will still crumble as, as a machine, as, a, as an athlete, and they still need to take those into consideration. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for that. I think um, from, from our, we'll get you back on the show at some point. We've literally yeah. got minutes left on the show now, but I think from, from in terms of your, your course, we've got a number of young lads, 16, 17-year-olds, who are going on to do their GCSE, doing their A-levels, but... Yeah. If it's something that they're listening, they're watching the show, and they're thinking, well, okay, this sounds interesting. What is the path, and how do they get to, and what, what are the options that they have to do, or get into something around, you know, just uh, uh, strengthening, yeah, um, sports, sports science and strength. What's the way forward for them to get into this? Um, I, I, I would definitely say if you have a keen interest in sport, and um, you also have a keen interest in things like biology, um, particularly human biology, yeah, anatomy, um, physiology, that yeah, side of it, not yeah. botany, right? Yeah, not yeah. So not the stuff where you're studying dandelions yeah. on 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 the field, but where you're actually worried about like the human body and how it responds. Also a bit of maths, a bit of physics, because you've got to remember you're looking at the body from a mechanical perspective as well. If you if you enjoy those things together, you enjoy the human body in general, and it's it's where performance. Then you'll find most of the fields somehow get into it and they collaborate. So anything chemistry, biology. Um, uh, 
physics, any, any of those sorts of sciences and maths where you think you're in, interested in sport and those as well. Uh, I, would, I would definitely pursue an A-level or, or, or a B-Tech even um, in sports science and, and those particular subjects so that you can lead on to a degree in those subjects. And at the moment, what university is the first kind of, what are the best top university that people can be looking at? Looking at? Um, in London, you have St. Mary's University, which is the only one that provides strength and conditioning as a bachelor's. Uh, there's also a Middlesex University, um, Brunel, and um, there, there is also UEL who, does a, who do a master's. So th these are options that you could basically explore. But I'd say St. Mary's University is where I'm, currently at and also continuing a masters with as well so i would say they are the best link for you to get into elite sports if you plan on getting into elite Brilliant. sports all right well thanks for that nasi we'll come back to you in a bit but uh and then we've got five minutes left yeah there's lots <coughs> of stuff going on at bfa in terms of other activities we've got the uk Bangladesh championships right coming up shortly uh this year as well yeah we have i mean the the winter league um is coming to our new end um we have seven eight games left um, then we're going to come into obviously the tournaments um, this year. Are you planning? I know you do one before. Yeah, before well, the I think um, is that something that you'll be planning this year. The Tehamnes Mayors Cup as well is coming yeah. up. Um, I don't know if the dates are finalised on that one. Then we've got this um, UK Bangladeshi Championships. Uh, I think it's in partnership with Channel List mm. um, or you know um, that one. I'm not sure about the dates yet, mm. um, but look, look out for this. Um, next week we've got a show as well probably announce it live next week. Um, and Summer League's around the corner. Okay. Um, the BFA Summer League's around the corner. It's going to start in the first week in May. Usually, yeah. Usual, usual. usual yeah. Um, I think we'll have three games before Ramadan. And um, obviously, and the Vets League as well. Um, the Summer League. Vets but that's your little well. baby. So tell us a bit about Vets League. And yeah. That's, I mean, that's last, year, uh, last year, last year was our first year. Um, 11 aside vets on that one. I mean, Reggie even played for my team um, last year. It was, it was great fun, great atmosphere. And hopefully he looked like a vet that day. I played against him. Yeah. <laughs> no way. He's telling people he looks like a 22-year-old. I'll tell you he looked like a 42-year-old that day. Shots, but anyway, that's a different story. Okay. <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't worry. My team is always like, my team talks always, everybody, I can see three or four ridges on the team. Where's the rest of you? <laughs> so he's got bags of energy. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that again. Uh, Summer League is obviously huge from our part um, in the big, big in the community from BFA. Applications are in right now, aren't they? Right now, applications in. All the information is up in the BFA website. Um, anyone's interested, you can email me about the Vets team. And I'm um, at um, so. How many BFA teams did UK. we have last year in the Vets League? Eight. Uh, we had seven. seven. Uh, this this year we've got eight confirmed. You know, a couple of more teams. Um, What's the maximum you can accommodate? I think 10 teams, we can accommodate 10, ten teams, okay. it's not a problem. Uh, all at Stepney again? All at Stepney, um, it's great fun, isn't it Reggie? Uh, just, you know, just remind people of the rules. Yeah, this the rules is same as the open age, uh, yeah, you know, um, four nuns on, on, on four the, non four non Bengalis on the pitch, and you know, 60 minute game, and you know, it's great fun guys, we have a final end of the season at Mile End. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're looking forward to your playing. I haven't played. <laughs> for, I felt that the last time I played football was that summer yeah. vet. So, so yeah, you know, uh, even that today, Bernardo was inquiring about it. Beaumont, I'm sure everyone's going to get a team in there again. So, yeah. looking forward to it. Excellent. All right, guys. Um, I, I was going to say, we've literally got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. I think, Nasir, from my perspective, I think just for, thank you for coming on today. Thanks a lot. Um, I, I hope the viewers have enjoyed um, your input and sharing your journey so far. It's, it's, you're practically just started it uh, it's the yeah. beginning of uh, bigger and better things for sure. you so yeah. uh, sure. I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing that with the oh, viewers sorry Andrew, just quickly okay. I mean if you don't mind I mean um, we've got a, um, a sport in Bengal Academy and uh, every Tuesdays as uh, you know um, six to eight and if you have any spare time if you want to come and look at our kids you know they're growing up um, and yeah. they've got some muscle problems and groin and you know calf problems you can come and give us some advice on that if you you know willing to yeah, yeah I'm, a bit I'm, of free time. I, I, I mean, within my expertise, so some of that sounded like physio stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like a, but yeah. what, what I'll do is, I mean, uh, we'll definitely hook something up where we can maybe have a look at definitely. like training programs or yeah. training regimens, yeah. current things that you're doing, current things that mm. we can kind of tick off and mm. maybe make sure we're doing next time. Yeah. It's more definitely. of a classroom so. exercise as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Education, yeah. I think, yeah it's, it's more education to begin with and then mm. it's out in the practice on the field. Mm. Yeah. As long as you understand the main things, then yeah. 
anyone can go out and do it, I think. Brilliant. Good. Thanks very much. Thanks go on. Go on. Um, over to you, one Reggie. Question. One thing. Um, I wonder, you know, in that Stephanie Green pitch, we are playing 3G. I really, I, w I want to use the uh, the changing room for a changing because we are in that in that uh, mm. rain changing outside. So I think there's a cost incurred please. there, but I'm thinking if you speak yeah, to him, he yeah. can sort that out for you. I mean, please, if I mean, if you don't mind, Reggie, because um, yeah. uh, you might have to pay towards the cost. I mean, if that's okay, it's not a huge amount, but take that offline. Uh, yeah, and I think that we shout okay. offline. Yeah. I think you could, that's something. Yeah, the thing is, the lads they are complaining about, you know, so they need. You know, yeah, that's that's totally understandable. It's raining. Sunday outside, league, so. get the change in the car. <laughs> you, <can come. laughs> you, need to, you need to get them a van or something. <laughs> <laughs> the, the changing rooms are there. I, I, I don't know. No. I, I think if the teams, yeah. cook, uh, you know, we, we don't use it. I mean, we, it's not allocated to our booking. So I mean, you know, it's an extra cost. We, we isn't can it? talk about that. That's anyway. something you guys can okay, chat about. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, guys, we're out of time. I think until next week, we've got loads more to talk about next week hopefully we'll have the chairman uh, here fbfa chairman aras uh aras Bay will be here to talk more about a lot of activity i think we're going to announce something next week on the show we've touched on the uk Bangladesh championship it's a bit of a bigger project than usual um uh, uh, i guess you've, he's already mentioned it that channel s will be on board this year so this that means that the exposure is going to be a lot more so any teams that are out there who are looking to take part in the uk Bangladesh championships uh, the bfa um, event that happens once a year the finals already booked at bradford city stadium on the 21st of may um so it's a it's a massive opportunity for you uh, and it's it's national it's not just for teams in london it's exactly what it says on the tin so any teams that are watching and you want to get involved the tournament will be here in london uh, over one weekend and then the final will be played on a separate date like i said 21st of may in bradford at bradford city stadium so it's a huge event for everybody to get involved in uh, we've also got the tower hamlets mayor's cup which i think is going to take place on the weekend of the 9th of april uh, again, all teams from across Tower Hamlets are invited. It's uh, youth teams from under eights all the way to the senior teams. So uh, uh, finals, uh, tournaments dates will happen on, the, on one week and the finals of the following week at Milan Stadium. So again, get in touch with BFA if you're interested in getting involved in that. Uh, and like I say, also Sporting Bengal, our next game, it's been a, a, a very, very mixed start to the year. Uh, we've got Enfield massive game on Saturday. We need to pick up something at that game after yesterday's event so of being 2-0 up and then losing 3-2. That was interesting, a heartbreaker for us. Um, but yeah, so Saturday becomes massive. We need to get something from that game. So if you're around on Saturday, the uh, uh, 11th next next week at Mile End, come down and support the boys. They take on Enfield at 3 o'clock at Mile End Stadium. All right, gents, we are out of time. Nasir, Enam, and Reggie, you've been a star. Uh, always my favourite guest on this show. Uh, we, will, uh, we will see you hopefully after the 19th, you, where you will have beaten Aberfeldy and you'll be in the final of the cup. I've been, uh, well, I've been in Mugazi, you've been watching BFA's On The Ball Show. See you next week, guys. Have a great week. Take care. Salam.